Hi everyone, welcome back to Thread Quarters. Thanks for joining me again today. Today I'm going to be chatting about um, the pieces that I um, sewed up for my trip to Paris recently. So if you'd like to hear a bit more about them, a bit more detail about the patterns and the fabric, then keep watching. So if you've been following along, I've had a string of videos this month, um, all based around my trip to Paris um, back in February. So the first video was a um, chat about my fabric shopping experience in Paris. Um, my second video was showing you my fabric haul. Um, last week I did just a little fun lookbook of all the different outfits that I put together for my trip and so today I'm going to be sharing in a bit more detail the different things that I made for my trip. If you'd like to see any of those videos the links will be in the description box down below so do check them out. So, um, <laughs> yeah I made a few pieces for my trip to Paris. Uh, which I hadn't initially planned on doing, but um, I was trying to, um, I was looking through my wardrobe um, um, a couple of weeks before I was going. I was trying to mentally imagine the different outfits that I was going to be wearing, um, which is what I do whenever I do go on a trip like that. Um, I like to know exactly what I'm going to wear each day, if I've got a rough idea of the weather. Um, then I just like to plan it out. Okay, here's the truth. My thoughts were that it was going to be very cold in February in Paris and I was very worried about this because I didn't have enough layering pieces for um, such a trip. I did however have a lot of fabric in my stash that had already been earmarked for um, long sleeve tops, warm tops, polo tops, things like that that I thought, you know what, perfect. I can whip these up and have them for my trip. They're things that I had planned on making all along, not specifically for my Paris trip, but um, it was the trip that really spurred me on to say, let's knuckle down and make these things so that I at least have them in my wardrobe and I can wear them on my trip. Uh, so that's what I did. <laughs> What I am going to say is a bit of a freak weather while we were there and it was so mild. It was about, average was probably about 14 degrees. We did have like 17, 18 degrees, which in Northern Ireland is a, night, is, is a nice summer's day. And we'd be out in our shorts and t-shirts. And there I was in Paris in my long black jeans with my knee high boots with fur in them, um, a long sleeve black top and a wool coat. Say I was warm was an understatement. <laughs> now obviously, and it wasn't wearing my wool coat every, you know, throughout the day. I had brought scarves, hats, gloves. They weren't worn, um, but you know, I still the lightest thing I brought was, um, you know, a long sleeve top. So I couldn't take any more layers off. So I was still hot, and I didn't want to spend my time trips around the shops just trying to find some lighter clothes to wear so I just made do with what I had. Yeah so um, as I was looking through my stash I realized I saw a bit of a theme coming up coming up that was um, a lot of black and white and I thought you know what let's just go with that it's gonna make my out putting my outfits together so much easier and um, you know you could play up the whole kind of French uh, Parisian chic look of the black and white stripes with uh, maybe like a red lip or something like that and I thought yeah let's let's just go with it um, and as I said I didn't buy any of this fabric specifically for this trip these were all fabrics that were already in my stash some of the pieces were already pre-cut out because as you guys if you watch my videos you know that I uh, I do like to um, bulk cut out things so that was done and because everything was going to be sewn up that everything I was sewing was going to be black it, I knew that I could do it quickly because my overlocker thread wouldn't have to be changed, my sewing machine thread wouldn't have to be changed, and a good pile of them were jersey. So again, I could use the same needle for a good a, a good load of them. So um, again, that is why I decided I'm just going to go with it and make all these pieces. 
so enough being said let's let's get into it so my very first piece um, is very basic totally basic 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 but it's something I absolutely needed in my wardrobe this is the Debra Zebra polo neck top by Stylark patterns I've never actually made um, style art patterns before you have to buy them um your measurement and then you get one above and one below so you only get three but there's three separate files um which i think is just crazy and ridiculous if you are in between sizes you'd have to print out three separate or two separate patterns and try and merge them together rather than having all the different lines on the one um to, uh, file. Um, I just think it's very unuser friendly and um, I don't understand why style art patterns do that when no one else seems to do that. Um, if you found um, it's something different with using style art then let me know. Maybe I have an old pattern or something like that. I don't know but it was. I, I just ended up going with the one measurement even though I was between sizes because I thought you know what it's just a, it's a really simple jersey top and I would be able to take it in and out without altering the pattern piece itself and just sew it up and then take it in where I needed to. Actually do you know what I ended up not doing an awful lot of alterations to this and um, I wanted a tighter fitting sleeve so I took that in um, I left the hips as is. It's actually a very long, I don't know if you can see that, it is a very long um, top so um, you know you don't need it to be as long. You could save some uh, fabric there if you needed to. In terms of um, the polo neck, it's so simple, it's just, I will show you because I haven't sewn it down, but it's just a very very big long tube rather than a separate piece. And then you tuck it in to itself like that. You're supposed to catch stitch here and here. I didn't bother because I was like, you know what? I, I, I think it's actually going to be less annoying if I just do that myself each time I put it on. It's fine. Um, so yeah, most polo neck um, patterns have a separate um, piece just a tube basically that you attach like a neckband but it's really really long uh, whereas this is sort of grown on. What this does do is it does end up giving you because of that you do get um, lines across here. I actually quite like that as an actual style feature. I think it's quite nice. I think it actually draws attention to my shoulders and sort of I don't know it just creates a nice sleekness here hard to explain but I, I do like it so easy so quick to sew up that's why I said you know it was one the, the thing that takes the longest is the cutting out especially this fabric I was actually gifted this fabric from Minerva Crafts it's a high content cotton jersey they have it in a huge range of um, colors I'll be doing a blog post for them um, in a few months time but um, in terms of this fabric it's you, just your basic basic cotton jersey and um, it's great for uh, your, your staples basically so it even would be thick enough for leggings if you you know like cover up your bum area because I reckon you probably would see your pants through it you know that sort of fabric but in terms of just having like some nice layers it's good for that and layering is exactly why I made this top I just thought you know what I'm going to be going to Paris it's going to be February I'm going to be cold I'm going to need all the layers I can get turns out I didn't it was really really warm but oh well in general really happy with this I um have made quite a few more as you'll find out <laughs> so let's get on to the next um, item right I'm gonna end up crazy here by the end of this um, <laughs> end of this so sorry about that but we've got another um, Debra Zebra polo neck but this time in spots yeah you can see it there <gasps> Yeah, so again, black and white, that's the theme really for um, these outfits. It's all really just black and white. Um, keeps it nice and simple, little monochrome concept going on. Fun thing about this fabric is that the inside is stripey. 
So um, I could have really gone to town and done like cuffs with the stripes, maybe done a different pattern, had the stripes as a neckband, that sort of thing. Um, but I just actually, do you know what? I really like the spots and I don't have any spots in my wardrobe. So I wanted to have a way of um, it being only spots. So I thought I'd do it this way. And what I can do if I want to have some stripes is I can just roll up the sleeves like that and you get the little stripe effect anyway. See, that's pretty cute. I could even do this, because again, I haven't caught the neckband down on this. Um, I could do this, basically. You would see this, the sewing, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. Let's see. Yeah, so that's kind of cute as well. Totally different vibe off it. Yeah, so this one is slightly shorter because I had um, a little bit less fabric to play with um, but because it's such a long um, body it, it's still perfectly adequate length for me and more than happy with that um, length. I like that it's a little bit loose here um, if you know me and my sewing I don't like anything super tight around my tummy it's just a personal preference I just think it's a little bit more flattering having it like this rather than showing things under there I don't want to show. <laughs> um, so I don't know there's not much else to say. Oh this fabric is um, really so soft and snuggly and warm and um, I wore this traveling on the plane and it was so comfortable it was really great. Again this was gifted to me um, by the lovely girls from Sewalicious thank you so much. Um, it did take me a little bit of time to decide what I was going to sew it up in but I'm really glad with what I ended up um, making with it and we have one more um, Deborah Zebra <laughs> coming up next and here we go the um, final Deborah Zebra that I made for my trip to Paris and um, this is significantly shorter as you can see also the neck looks a lot um, shorter it's almost like a mock turtleneck length um, again I haven't actually sewn that down so you could just flip that up because it doesn't fray um, if you wanted to have that sort of effect it'd be okay this is beautiful 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 um, jersey interlock fabric I bought from the um, village haberdashery I um, did have an idea of a black and white <laughs> polo neck top for my trip to Paris in mind so this one I did actually go ahead and purchase yes yeah, so I did have this in mind I was searching everywhere and for the perfect black and white stripe because again I wanted to make sure that I bought something that I would I knew I would love I didn't want it to be like a slinky uh, viscose jersey I wanted it to be a cotton jersey and um, a lot more sort of structured um, than floaty and um, I think I saw someone else on Instagram had made a top with this fabric so I went on to the Village Haberdashery website and I saw they had it. It was a little bit expensive um, so instead of buying like two meters I bought a meter and a half um, and it turned up and it was tiny and I thought this is in the meter and a half um, what have I done here? What, what's, what's happened? And I, re I realized then that the village haberdashery put their units in um, 25 centimeter increments rather than half meter increments, which is um, what I'm normally used to when I'm shopping online. I have shopped with them before, but it was a while ago and I've forgotten. I, I think it's because they sell a lot of, excuse me, a lot of um, quilting fabrics as well, you see. So I had bought, in, I bought three units, which I thought was a meter and a half. <clears throat> It was 75 centimeters <laughs> and I thought oh, that's that I can't make a top out of 75 centimeters um what am I gonna do with it I'm gonna have to piece it I didn't want to order more because do you know what actually 75 centimeters of fabric in this fabric was a lot of money I, I actually thought it was a lot of money for a meter and a half <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head um, how much it is. I'll put the link down below to the fabric. It is excellent quality. It's so soft and snuggly. Um, I 
actually do really recommend it and I got this out of 75 centimeters so that's why it is significantly shorter than all the other Deborah Zebra tops that's why the polo neck is a mock neck polo neck but you know what I actually really love how it's turned out so you know sometimes these things happen for a reason <laughs> and it was a good challenge as well to see is there any chance I could get this out of um if, if I could get this out of 75 centimeters so I mean if you're similar size to me or smaller then you can get a top out of less than a meter which is just awesome <laughs> Oh yeah, and even though it was only 75 centimeters, you can still pattern match. Love that. So happy with that. Oh, like that, I mean, that just gives me joy. <laughs> it's the little things, you know? And my last uh, jersey top for my trip, um, not a um, Deborah Zebra, but still a polo neck. This is the Monroe polo neck by uh, Tessuti Fabrics. Um, it's very like the Mandy Boat Tee, which is their free t-shirt pattern. I've made loads of them. There's a link down below to my video of all my Mandys. I'm in love with that pattern. I wear it all the time. And this is sort of your winter version. This isn't a free pattern, but um, it is, it's a great one actually. So you can see it's just a bit, sort of a big square and then polo neck on the top this fabric is fabric from so is faction i think she's still got it i'll link it down below if she has it's really really stretchy actually look at that super super stretchy initially i thought i was going to make like a blackwood cardigan out of it but um i don't know i just decided i didn't want a cardigan out of out of it so it had sat in my stash for a little while deciding about this trip and what I was going to make I saw this in my stash and I was like yes this would be perfect and because it's quite stretchy I didn't want a tight fitting top that's my own personal preference and it's quite it's got a lot of drape to it so I thought that something similar to the Mandy with that um, loose fit drop shoulders would work well with this fabric and I'm actually really pleased with how it has turned out I have to admit I did not do any pattern matching that is atrocious down there but you know what again I didn't have enough fabric to do it properly I just had to make it work what way I could and I I'm happy with the way it's turned out it is really comfy so um, nice actually a little bit floaty you get a little bit of warmth but you don't get overheated in it so um, it's a good sort of um, transitional piece yeah the close-up of the And we have some color <laughs> so um this is not black and white but there's black in it so i just use my um black thread so didn't have to change that just change the needle this is a lovely drapey lady mcelroy i think it's called foliage um crepe uh where did i buy it from i can't remember maybe sherwood fabrics i'm not sure i've had it in my stash a little while <laughs> But actually, I've had it cut out and in one of my folders ready to sew up for quite a while as well. This is the Beatrix top by um, made by Ray. I have made this a few times before. In I've lengthened it into a dress. I've made the top version. And in this particular version, there is no um, center back button band, which is one of the main features of the... Um, the top but I just thought you know what it's a good shape on me the bust starts always end up in the right place except there they were had moved a bit and um, I like the curved um, hem that it has it's um, nice on my um, shoulders it just fits quite well so I thought you know what it's a good one to just use I could tur turn it into a shift top basically when I was thinking about my plans for um, Paris I was 
putting in lots of um, casual clothes and whatnot and I just thought wouldn't it be nice to have a couple of tops to put on in the evening and um, when we go out for dinner because I knew we'd be coming back to the apartment maybe relaxing for a little bit after walking all day and then freshen up and go out for dinner so I thought it'd be nice to have a change of outfit for that but of course me being me I really didn't like anything I had in my wardrobe that's a whole other video by the way <laughs> Um, I'm having a real moment with my wardrobe but um, I knew I looked in my stash and I could see some pieces but cutting out does take up quite a lot of time particularly for wovens so I looked in my um, UFOs and I found this and I thought yes this is perfect because it's going to go with black jeans and that's what I was going to be packing for my trip was only black jeans and um, so I just thought yep yeah, I'm going to put this I'm going to whip this up and it really didn't take very long at all especially since there weren't any buttonholes or closures to have to worry about and um, it's a little bit close up you can see there's the bus start slightly high actually let's see there's the bus start um, yeah it's a great wee top I know I'm gonna get so much use out of this Um, it just in the evenings or whatever it can be dressed up or down as well I would say the only thing I would say is maybe next time I might work on changing the neckline um, it's nice but I don't think it's the most flattering neckline on me so I might work on that and we are back to black again this is a, another Beatrix top um, by made by Ray again I had this in my UFO pile I have a large UFO pile it's just the way I work actually and initially I did do a confessions video one time showing you all my UFOs and going this is horrendous and it's stressing me out I've come to terms with it now and actually after this trip to Paris it has just shown me that you know what it's great having that having those projects ready cut out so that if inspiration hits I could just get on with the sewing so I'm more than happy to have my UFO pile now it's a good it's a good realization to come to anyway this fabric is a lovely um, jacquard is that called jacquard um, you can see um, there's a lovely floral detail on it if it's focusing I think so um, and actually it's the kind of fabric you can use the other side off if you wanted something fancier because it's super shiny on the inside but I, I just like the matte look better um, and it's got a little bit of texture on it too and um, yeah it's just a classic black top loose fitting curved hem that's what I always love but I do have the button plackets at the back of this version faux buttons though because um, as in a faux placket though because um, I don't like doing buttonholes and if I don't need to do them I'm not going to do them and I can get this on over my head without undoing any buttons so I thought you know what let's not do that but I did make a bit of a feature of it and I hope I can focus on these guys So these are the cutest little bee buttons and I picked them up from the um, textile garden. She has the most amazing selection of buttons. Um, to be honest, anytime I want to find a button for a project, I will go to her, her shop first. And the link will be down below. They're just so beautiful and so it's such a lovely um, curation. Uh, so do check them out I've bought quite a few buttons from her her delivery is second to none it was exceptionally fast just absolutely beautiful and these little bees are just so beautiful I've bought more because I want I was thinking like a little um, a blouse with a proper button um, a proper sleeve placket here and then just a little be on on it would just be so adorable so I'm excited to make that at some point I'm not sure when it's gonna happen but not <laughs> not too soon and this is just a little sneaky peek of something else I whipped up 
um, to take with me to Paris. Again, it was already cut out before I started thinking about my Paris trip, but um, it made me push on and get it done in time so I could take it with me. I'm gonna do a um, full vlog dedicated to this coat. It is the um, Berlin jacket by Tessuti Fabrics and I might have made it reversible. So I wanted to chat about it properly in its own vlog. So stay tuned in about two weeks time, I'd say for that. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe if you do enjoy my channel and hit the notification bell down there if you want an update on when I've uploaded a new video, you'll get a little email letting you know. So um, I also, while I was away, I did take some outfit uh, footage of everything I wore and um, putting all these pieces together plus ready to wear uh, because not everything in my wardrobe is handmade and I'm totally fine with that. And I'm gonna be putting that video up next week. So if you're interested in that, then tune in next week for that. Um, but otherwise, hope you have a lovely weekend and I'll see you all again soon. Bye. Bye.